Romero was about to make you his bitch. Dai Katana, released in the year 2000, is one of the most well-known examples of one man's appalling hubris formed into a crappy PC game. But today we're not playing that piece of garbage because that game totally sucks. And instead, we're going to play the slightly better version on the Game Boy Color. This version was released in the same year, and fortunately, you don't have to worry about being John Romero's bitch with this one because he didn't make it. Development of this one was outsourced to a man named Takeo Mogi, and it was published by Chemco. This one's a top-down action RPG that plays a lot like Crystallis or The Legend of Zelda on the original NES. Just like in the PC version, you play as Hiro Miyamoto, and yes, that is a reference to Shigeru Miyamoto. Anyways, Hiro is training in his dojo, and old man Ebihara comes and tells him about the Dai Katana. Basically, a bad dude named Mishima asks Hiro's ancestor to make the Dai Katana for him. Once Hiro's ancestor realized how powerful Mishima would be with this sword, he hid it away from him. Fast forward many years into the future, and now one of the Mishima bloodline has gotten his hands on the Dai Katana. He's used it to travel back in time and change history, stealing the antidote to a deadly virus. So, old man Ebihara tells Hiro that naturally it's his job to go and defeat Mishima and retrieve the Dai Katana. He also requests that Hiro saves his daughter, Mikiko, which basically means that Hiro gets a bonus girlfriend out of the deal. So that's pretty much the beginning of the game, and it starts us off on our quest, which will have us jumping through different time periods, kinda like Chrono Trigger. Now let's go ahead and talk about how the game actually plays. And right off the bat, I'll mention that gun shooting mechanics don't translate very well to a top-down game like this, unless it's a twin-stick shooter, which this game obviously isn't. It's just really difficult to aim your gun at the enemy while also trying to avoid their shots. In fact, it's practically impossible, and a lot of times, you'll just have to sit there and trade bullets with the enemy until they die. The game has a lot of different guns, including a Glock, but unfortunately they all kind of feel the same. It would have been nice if there was like a spread shot, or a flamethrower, or a homing missile, something to give you some more advantage in ranged combat. Fortunately, the melee weapons are just as effective as the guns, if not more so, including the titular Dai Katana. Most of the time in this game, it's a lot easier to kill the enemies with your sword as opposed to your gun. So, like I said, sometimes you're just going to have to absorb damage, which means you want to be on the lookout for health capsules. Now, the health capsules are good, obviously, because they restore your health, but they also kind of suck because they get activated as soon as you touch them. This means you can't carry the health capsules around with you to use whenever you need them. And since these capsules are the only way to restore your health, that means that if you pick them all up in the level already, and you get to the boss fight and you have low health, well then you're kinda shit out of luck. Something else that kinda sucks is when the game makes you switch to a different character. Sometimes you have to play as Mikiko Ebihara, and sometimes you have to play as Superfly Johnson. Seriously, in a game full of characters with Japanese names, he certainly stands out as the oddball, with a name that sounds like he's the kind of guy that wants to crash your World of Warcraft raid. One thing that I do like about this game is the fact that you can save anywhere. It's really appreciated in a game like this. But another annoying thing is that the interact button and the shoot button are the same. So this means when you go to try to open a door, you could waste ammo unless you go ahead and equip your sword first. It gets a little bit annoying. There's also puzzles in this game, and early on they're not too bad, they're pretty simple, nothing special. But later on as the game progresses, the puzzles turn into complete bullshit, because it's a bunch of needless backtracking for no good reason. Something else that's bullshit is this boss fight with this Nahar guy? N Nahar? I don't know how you say his name, but his boss fight fucking sucks. He does the whole doppelganger thing where there's like a real one and a fake one, and he keeps teleporting around, and you have like no time to react when he attacks you. It's like the most annoying part of the whole goddamn game, but I did get through it eventually. So that pretty much covers like the whole game. I mean, there's a little bit more after that boss fight, and I went ahead and played through it, but it's really nothing special. 
It's pretty cool how they adapted a crappy PC game into a Game Boy Color game that was actually a little bit better, but overall it's really not a great game, it's just mediocre. So that brings us to the end of this review. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I'll tell you what, if you want to see me review Daikatana on PC, then help me get to 25,000 subscribers. And if the audience still wants to see it then, then I'll go ahead and review that game. Although hopefully you won't want to see it, because I don't like that game very much. Anyways, I'll see you all in the next episode, and until next time, you keep playing those games. Hey, did you know that I made a video game? It's a science fiction game called K37D, and it's on Steam right now. You have to repair the computer systems of a facility on a distant planet while fighting off attacks from monstrous creatures. Please go ahead and check it out on Steam today. Thank you.